Hey guys, it's the Conic, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the newly revealed Path of Exile 2 class, The Witch. Now, as the de facto summoner class, I have been highly anticipating its reveal since it was mentioned in an interview by Jonathan earlier this year. You may notice a very distinct lack of live gameplay footage from yours truly as the video progresses, and there is most definitely a reason for that, and that reason is definitely not the fact that I was not invited for the co-op session. Definitely. Just, you know, give me a second because I think I forgot something in the corner. I most definitely was not crying. In. But all jokes aside, I am going to be basing my opinions on what was revealed via the reveal video, the teasers, the interview, as well as just information that has been given by, you know, creators such as Gazi, who is, of course, a minion aficionado like myself, and um, Talkative Try, who was also pretty hype about the announcement in, during the session in path of exile 2 it was revealed much earlier that there would be a tiered resource besides life and mana which would be used for reserving auras and summoning permanent minions this resource is called spirit and the moment i heard this i was concerned because you know you mean to tell me that i cannot have a mighty army with multiple auras all my path of exile 1 experience had me shuddering at the thoughts but after seeing the minions absolutely demolish a level 2 and level 30 boss boss I can pretty confidently say that my worries were completely unnecessary as of the time of recording. It does, however, look like the primary source of spirit are weapons, scepters to be specific. And it is currently unclear if armor can be used to add to this resource. But hopefully over time we're going to have more information on um, this on spirit as a whole. I am going to give a quick description of all the minions mentioned so far and what they do based on what I have seen and what has been said. It should be noted that most minions, unless otherwise stated, resurrect automatically after 6 seconds of not having a single minion die. Or I should say, a single respawnable minion die. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy the content, as it not only is a big morale boost for me to keep making videos, it helps the videos reach more people as we try to hit a thousand subs. To start things off, is the skeleton warrior minion provided by a scepter we high we higher level warriors being provided by high level scepters these are your typical frontline minions that you probably don't that probably don't do the most damage but they will make up the front line of your army early on and so maybe some builds would want to use them in the end game though we do not know how tanky they are or how much damage they can eat but based off of what was shown in their teasers, I would say they don't have the most health out there. Then we have the Skeletal Snipers, which are someone unlike the Warriors. These are someone from a skill gem. These are skeletons which fire arrows at enemies from a distance. Their projectiles almost look like they do chaos damage, but odds are it's physical. They have an activatable ability which fires a gas arrow at a target location, which um, releases a gas cloud and that does poison damage or poison damage over time and is detonatable by fire skills from a party member or yourself an obvious synergistic way of detonating this would be via the skeletal arsonist which we will be discussing next it should also be noted that during a clip it looked like an enemy was able to detonate this cloud for no extra damage so do keep that in mind next is the skeletal arsonist these are ranged minions which throw bombs at enemies and have an, ab an active ability to explode low health minions on command. These minions will have a bright light on their heads to indicate they are detonatable. This footage is from Talkative Tries Overview and as you can see at the end, while the arsonist bombs do not detonate the poison cloud from the snipers, exploding low health minion does for extra damage. The next on the list are Bone Constructs. These are temporary melee minions summoned when using the skill on Earth to kill an enemy or hit its corpse. Limit wise, I did not see a cap on the number of these minions you could have, but it is possible that there is a hard cap other than just having them be duration based. These minions also were very well received and I personally look forward to trying them out eventually. It should also be noted that as of the recording of this video, 
there is no chance of summoning a bone construct from hitting a rare or unique enemy and with a confirmation from jonathan that desecrate will not be in pov2 if a boss does not summon adds you will not be able to use this the these minions for the fight these minions also do not automatically revive next minion on the list is going to be zombies starting out i just have to say this i love how they look carrying a hatchet rather than just being unarmed like in poe1 they do require corpses to be summoned or alternatively you can use power charges if they are summoned off of power charges they are empowered for a short duration and go back to being regular zombies they do not seem to have an active ability and they also have some synergy just like bone constructs with the revealed contagion as if mobs are killed while affected by contagion their corpses will be infected and any minion summoned from a corpse that is infected by contagion will be able to spread the damage over time debuff now we're going to be going through minions that we have less information on but are more likely to be what we are going to fill our armies of the dead with in the end game the first is of course going to be the skeletal cleric which according to jonathan heals and revives minions its heal has great synergy with the skeletal reavers which we'll talk about next um, it is currently unknown if they can heal the player but i don't think it would be a stretch to think their active ability potentially could do this or something or provide an even stronger heal for your minions we're just going to have to wait and see as we do not currently have more information on them next up are the skeletal reavers these are typical melee dps minions which have an enrage mechanic which applies a self degen but increases their damage output even further now, because of this degen, it is likely to only be usable with a cleric to keep them from dying mid-battle and potentially resurrecting them if they do end up dying um, due to taking too much damage or any other reason. Next, we have the Storm Mages. These skeletal mages summon lightning that strikes enemies applying shock if the appropriate conditions are met. Its active ability summons lightning on the corpse of every dead skeleton in your army providing a lot of overlap if you have many skeletons that are dead on one spot and the enemy just happens to be there next up we have the ice mages these skeletal mages shoot an ice icy projectile which can chill and freeze enemies its active ability from what i have seen seems to be to cast an ice nova like ability at a target location probably increasing um applying even greater chill than their basic attacks then we have the skeletal brutes these are minions we have almost no information on other than the fact that they are stun focused melee minions and honestly they are very likely to be the mid shields of choice late game for minion armies i see them being very thick you know very um healthy have, having high defense but low damage but being able to eat a ton of damage and potentially cost more spirits than the skeletal warriors or reavers the last minion showcased in the reveal was less a minion and more a gem which was the bind spectre gem which summons a spectre version of a non-unique monster to fight on your side the stronger the monster the more spirit it will cost and it should be it should act like the current race spectre in poe1 where you can just summon a spectre of an enemy and it has a certain um predefined skill set that it can use for you this honestly even in poe one is my favorite gem and i look forward to seeing the kind of specters we have i do have a few concerns based off of the fact that the tougher the stronger the, the um specter the more spirit it will cost but these are all things that i think can be adjusted and we'll have to see how it is on release there are also new offering skills that were re revealed in poe2 offering skills sacrifice a skeleton impaling said skeleton on a bone spike buffing all nearby minions as long as the spike remains the revealed offerings are bone offering which shields minions absorbing a single hit and exploding afterwards as well as pain offering which according to jonathan quote makes minions faster and deal more damage unquote i assume this means they get bonus attack and cast speed potentially movement speed as on top of a damage bonus now for the moment some of you have been waiting for my thoughts on 
the reveal. Overall, I think it looks very promising and I can't wait to get my hands on the witch. However, I do have a few concerns about some interactions mentioned during the reveal that I'm going to be going over. My first and biggest concern so far is with the respawn mechanic for minions. My current understanding of how it works is to respawn your minions, you would have to go six seconds without losing a single respawnable minion. Then all your dead minions that can be respawned will be respawned at full health. The problem with this system is in a boss fight that has mechanics that do not wipe completely wipe out your army, but instead just kills a few at a time, you might be left without a good chunk of your minions for DPS if they die just before the, the timer um, finishes to resurrect them. So in theory, if like Jonathan said, we have 20 minions, and this is going to be an extreme example to kind of explain what I mean. If we have 20 minions late game, and there's a boss mechanic that kills 1 to 2 minions every 5 seconds, it would take us 50 to 100 seconds to lose all of our minions to then elapse the 6 full seconds of not losing a respawnable minion to then respawn our entire army. Now, this is an extreme example, and this should actually never happen, at least from what I have seen. It shouldn't be the case in many situations, but it highlights a big flaw in the system, and that could lead to frustration in actual, like, in practice and... Um, because you would have suboptimal DP DPS for like a large chunk of the boss fights as you could just be constantly bleeding minions every time a minion dies before that time or you just lose an extra minion that, sh that could be doing damage and it resets that time and if another dies you just keep losing you, you, can ju you can in theory just keep losing minions to where eventually you're doing minuscule damage but you're not respawning because something keeps dying um and the longer the fight goes on slash the more minions you have the worse this could potentially be so it's something we we'll have to we will definitely have to um see how it actually how the system actually works out in practice this problem can even be seen in the reveal boss fights as they get constantly killed by aoe or dots and are prevented from respawning until the entire army is completely wiped out now this is less of an issue on the level two boss as there were enough um ads to supplement um corpses for the, to then use on earth and get bone constructs so the bone constructs ended up carrying that fight through dps but it is more obvious on the level 30 because they were they weren't that boss did not have the ads and as such they were more reliant on the permanent minions now this problem already has a potential solution in the form of the skeletal cleric which if you remember what it does it can resurrect and heal other minions now depending on how effective it is at either of these things will determine if this is a minion worth using or even if um this is a non-negotiable because it's very possible that we would all have to use at least one skeletal cleric to prevent the situation i described earlier other solutions would be things like using shielding boss like maybe bone offering to just try to get them to live through those six seconds of um that they would have to that they would then respawn right so these are all so these are all potential solutions but until we see um actual numbers until we see how it actually feels to play these we can't really come to any conclusions so this is just something to keep in mind and something to watch out for when the early access comes out another concern i have is with the announcement that each support gem a character uses can only be used once and cannot be re repeated across multiple skill gems this on paper is fantastic honestly and should lead to a lot of very healthy build diversity however if this is not implemented properly it could lead to insane amounts of fri friction especially with minion builds because of the number of skill gems we could potentially end up using kind of like how currently in poe1 minion builds have insane socket starvation so i mean that's not something no one likes but if there is any game dev i believe can implement it properly i think it's ggg so we'll have to see how they tackle it and this problem is especially you know 
obvious when it comes to having support gems like GMP or Spell Echo that can easily be used by different minions with the same like range attack style, you know. So we'll have to see what they do. But I am looking forward to seeing how they do implement this or if they even decide to go down a different route. Overall, the reveal has me very excited at voice to come and I am definitely looking forward to playtesting minions whenever I get the chance to. Do let me know down in the comments what you think if you agree with my take or if you think it's the worst take to have ever seen the light of day. And with all that said, thank you for watching.